The Age of Discovery became a starry time for European colonizers who explored and conquered new, unknown lands. Energetic merchants, dashing sailors, greedy lovers of easy game, and stern knights went on a quest for fabulous treasures and immortal glory in unknown worlds. What prompted them to face danger, and what trials awaited them on the way? One of the reasons for the search for new trade routes and lands was the catastrophic shortage of spices used for cooking dishes and extending their shelf life. This was due to the Ottoman occupation of most of the eastern Mediterranean and southern Balkans in the 15th century. The hostility of the Ottoman Turks to the Genoese and the Venetians, whose ships were the main carriers of spices and other oriental goods, minimized getting spices by the Europeans and encouraged the latter to seek new ways of supplying vital provisions. Another factor that stimulated the search for new lands was the lack of gold and silver coins in the late Middle Ages European market. Mythologized legends about fabulous treasures and deposits of gold, silver, and gems in India and China have seduced European kings and aristocrats who sought to possess a portion of these treasures. At this time, scientific progress led to the spread of Eratosthenes' idea among European scientists about the sphericity of the Earth. Among such advanced thinkers were the Italians Fra Mauro, Paolo Toscanelli, and the German Martin Beheim. Each of them developed its own version of the globe map. These ideas inspired many future discoverers to seek a way to India and China westward. The completion of the Reconquista with the defeat of the Emirate of Granada allowed the Spanish rulers Isabella and Ferdinand to receive considerable revenues and trophies. This success warmed up their conquering appetites and at the same time ignited their desire to establish Catholicism in more new territories. After the expulsion of the Muslim armies from the Iberian Peninsula, most of the Hidalgo remained unemployed. These poor knights desperately sought to continue gaining fame and money with their weapons, so they quickly joined the ranks of discoverers. New types of ships, such as the Caravel and the Carrick, which were faster and more mobile than their predecessors, and with good capacity, contributed to the geographical discovery. The Portuguese were the first to explore the still unknown islands in the Atlantic Ocean. Their king, Henry the Navigator, generously financed the development of cartography and the voyages of his subjects off the coast of Africa. Through these campaigns, the Portuguese king hoped to find a way to India and China, as well as to overcome Arab piracy in Atlantic waters near Africa. Portuguese sailors surveyed and colonized Madeira and the Azores and explored the coasts of Western Sahara. They subsequently discovered the islands of Cape Verde and explored the coasts of Senegal and the Gambia. Looking for the southern route to India, Bartolomeu Diaz rounded the Cape of Good Hope in 1488 and became the first European to enter the Indian Ocean from the southern side. The Bataan of Discoveries was continued with a fateful expedition led by the energetic Genoese navigator Christopher Columbus. This ambitious sailor, as a young man, became obsessed with sailing to the shores of India and China by the western route after correspondence with Paolo Tuscanelli. In 1492, he succeeded in igniting his idea with Queen Isabella of Spain. She provided the Genoese with much of the funds for his expedition. Together with her king husband, she promised to make Christopher viceroy of all lands he would find, leaving him 10% of all the jewels, spices, and other merchandise found on the newly discovered lands. In August, three ships, La Santa Maria, Nina, and Pinta, left Andalusia for adventures and new discoveries. On 12 October, Columbus was the first European to visit the Bahamas. Then he sailed for Cuba and Hispaniola, present-day Haiti. On these islands, the Spaniards made contact with local tribes and conducted a failed search for gold deposits. In addition, the members of the Columbus expedition for the first time saw tobacco, maize, and some native flora and fauna. They took them along with several local Indians who were taken to Spain early the following year. In March 1493, 
Columbus returned to Spain with two ships, where he was given a ceremonial reception. After Columbus' first voyage, Spain and Portugal signed the Treaty of Tordesillas. According to it, the Spanish gained territories in their conquering interests west of the 49 meridians of the Western Hemisphere, and the Portuguese had territories to the east. Accordingly, Spain was assigned the western direction of the search for India and China, and Portugal got the eastern one as far as the southern coast of Africa. During Columbus' second expedition, he had 17 ships and nearly 2,000 men under his command. The Spaniards on his voyage discovered some Lesser Antilles and established themselves in Cuba and Haiti. They proceeded to occupy these territories, forcibly baptize and enslave the local inhabitants. There wasn't any gold in sufficient quantity, as well as spices. Gradually, many participants and organizers of this expedition realized that the found islands have nothing in common with China and India and will not bring significant revenues. This caused disappointment of the Spanish authorities. Subsequently, Columbus, despite his discovery of the New World, fell into disfavor with the monarchs. Meanwhile, the Portuguese, convinced of their chosen course, sent an expedition of four ships to India in July 1497, led by Vasco da Gama. This small flotilla passed without much trouble to the Cape of Good Hope, but already near Mozambique, the Portuguese experienced difficulties due to lack of knowledge of local waters. They managed to bribe several Arab pilots, who showed them the way to Zanzibar and India. In India, Europeans were struck by the wealth of goods in local markets. However, there was almost no demand for their goods, so the expeditions were able to buy only a small amount of spices. However, the cost-effectiveness of this trip was still 600% due to the lack of a huge markup from Arab spice suppliers. During the voyage, the Portuguese often clashed with Arab traders who controlled the spice trade in the region. These tensions prompted the Portuguese to choose an armed occupation of the land in subsequent expeditions. The Portuguese returned home in August 1499, losing two ships and about 65% of their personnel. The next Portuguese expedition to India, numbering 17 ships, was led by Pedro Cabral. Among its participants was Bartolomeo Dias, a researcher from Africa. Initially, the expedition took a somewhat excessive westward course to bypass the equatorial current, which ran in the opposite direction to the expedition. Thus, in April 1500, Pedro Cabral and his team accidentally discovered the coasts of Brazil and proclaimed it the possession of Portugal. This marked the beginning of the further Portuguese colonization of these territories. After sailing to India, the Portuguese established trading posts in Calicut and Kochi and purchased over 100 tons of spices. However, the trading post in Calicut was destroyed by the locals, led by Arab merchants, for which the Portuguese took vengeance, looting and destroying all Arab ships and merchant shops that they encountered. The expedition returned home in July 1501, and, in addition to significant financial dividends, gave the Portuguese faith in establishing their own hegemony in the Indian Ocean. Meanwhile, Spain settled islands in the Caribbean Sea and the coast of Central America. However, since the rich deposits of silver and gold in America have not yet been found, and the spices were certainly not there, the Spaniards decided to revive the project of a maritime trade route to Eastern Asia through the western direction. They gained help from Ferdinand Magellan, an ambitious Portuguese man who was well acquainted with navigation in the Indian Ocean and had been transferred to the service for Spanish monarch Charles of Habsburg. In August 1519, a flotilla of five ships led by Magellan set out for the unknown in search of a western route to the Spice Lands. The Portuguese King Manuel learned of this expedition. Fearing for his monopoly, he ordered all Portuguese ships to destroy Spanish ships in the sphere of Portuguese influence. At first, the Spanish ships safely passed almost the entire Atlantic Sea, but had to winter in southern Patagonia due to problems with finding the strait, which, according to Magellan and cartographers of the time, should have been to the north. At this time, the captains of the three ships rebelled, but Magellan quickly quelled the rebellion as he had the support of the crew. 
The expedition then wandered for a long time through the mazes of the strait, which would later be named after Magellan. Three ships came out of it into the unknown ocean. Magellan named the ocean Pacific because in the first weeks of the expedition, the weather was really calm. However, the sailors were subsequently forced to endure famine, water shortages, hellish storms, scurvy, and other illnesses. In March 1521, the expedition reached the Philippines, where Magellan decided to establish ties with the locals and buy spices from them. However, Ferdinand was involved in local feuds, during which he was killed. The voyage was on the verge of a complete fiasco, because, except for the deceased captain, no one had knowledge of the geography of the local islands and the Indian Ocean. They barely made it to the Moluccas and bought spices there. Then the Spanish separated. The ship Trinidad with spices was to return to the east and swim to the Spanish colonies on the American coast of the Pacific Ocean. The flagship Victoria, laden with spices, and now led by the Basque Sebastian Elcano, was to break through the Indian Ocean, in which the Portuguese squadron sailed with the task of destroying the Spaniards. Overcoming hunger, fatigue, illnesses, and Portuguese pursuers, Victoria's 18-man crew sailed for Spain on 6 September 1522. Thus, the western route to Asia was opened, and the Spanish, led by Sebastián Elcano, made the first circumnavigation of the world. In the late 16th century, the Netherlands won its independence from the Spanish Empire. Since then, due to its high level of urbanization, technological development, and trade, the Republic has rapidly become a wealthy and advanced nation with a large merchant fleet. The Dutch merchants, too, sought to join the super-profitable spice trade, but, lacking a large enough navy, decided to explore the northern routes to Asia. On 5 June 1594, the Dutch explorer Willem Barentz set out to find a northern sea route. Three weeks later, he reached the shores of Novi Zemlya and explored it, but further eastward, advances were prevented by icebergs in August. The Dutch travelers were forced to return home. During his third voyage, Barentz discovered the islands of Spitsbergen, but was covered with ice while attempting to continue his voyage east of Novi Zemlya. The travelers decided to winter in this cold Arctic tundra, but in such harsh conditions, only a small part of them survived. The captain himself died of scurvy on Novi Zemlya. In the early 17th century, taking advantage of the Portuguese weakening, the Dutch East India Company was able to establish itself in several trading posts in India, Java, and the southern Malacca Islands, from where it operated the spice trade. To explore the uncharted seas and conquer new lands, the Dutch sent the Willem Jansoon expedition. During this trip, the Dutch explored the west coast of New Guinea and visited the Cape York Peninsula, becoming the first Europeans to land in Australia. Another attempt to discover the northern sea route to Asia was the voyage of one of the most restless travelers, Henry Hudson. The Englishman first sailed the Barents Sea, then joined the Dutch East India Company. As head of a Dutch expedition, Henry explored the shores of Newfoundland, Labrador, the northeast Atlantic coast of the modern United States, Manhattan, and the Hudson River, named after him. This expedition became the first brick of the establishment of the Dutch colonies in North America. In 1610, Hudson joined the English King's service and organized a voyage in search of the northern route to the east, as far as North America. The expedition ended in rebellion and failure, and Henry himself, disembarked by the rebels in the Hudson Bay, died of hunger and cold. In the tropical seas, the work of Jansoon was continued by Abel Tasman. He, during his first voyage, sailed the southern seas of Australia, discovered the island, which was later named Tasmania, explored the western coast of New Zealand, some islands of Tonga and Fiji, and the northern side of New Guinea. During his second voyage, Tasman explored the coast of West Guinea, the Gulf of Carpentaria, and the coastline of Northeast Australia. However, these finds in his time were not appreciated, because in the open lands, Abel Tasman did not find spices, precious metals, or jewels. Great geographical discoveries led to the formation of new trade routes, 
the penetration of Europeans into new territories, and their acquaintance with new cultures, worlds, plants, and animals. At the same time, they led to further colonization by Europeans of the open lands and the destruction or enslavement of most of the local inhabitants. In addition, the world was shaken by the price revolution, the disintegration of feudal relations, and the acceleration of capitalism due to the discovery of rich deposits of silver and gold in America.